This fragrance review is gonna be a fun one for me just because I haven't reviewed anything from Narciso de Rodriguez since I reviewed the original. Um, huge, huge fan of this one. I just felt like it was the most undesigner designer fragrance out there. Um, it really is artistic. I hate throwing out niche like, but very artistic as a fragrance. Utilized musks like I've never really um, smelt before very much. And, and the color of the bottle just really resonates with the mood that this fragrance. It's very dark grayish. And that's why I'm wearing my gray shirt today because I am reviewing its younger brother. So the Eau de Toilette, huge fan of it. If you don't know, huge, huge fan. Um, just because of that. And Narciso de Rodriguez doesn't release too many men's fragrances. So when they do, um, they do get my attention just because of that fragrance right there. They released this one right uh, a few years later, I believe. And this is the Musk Edition, um, smaller bottle, me metallic looking uh, to it. I, I haven't reviewed this fragrance, it's the smaller bottle. And this thing is of course compared to the one I'm gonna be reviewing today is the uh, EDP, the Parfum Intense version. So the EDP, this thing's rare. Um, not too many shops uh, carry this. Again, through my journeys, maybe in your area, you can find this like you can find Le Mal, but um, is this worth seeking out if you are watching my fragrance review? Is it close to the original Eau de Toilette that I really, really love? Uh, the one thing I do come to appreciate from this brand is that they are highly artistic with all their fragrances. I would have to say in the designer game, this is the kings of musks. Um, I really think that this brand is that. So without further ado, let's review this bad boy. What's going on YouTube fragrance family? Welcome to another Robes 08 full fledged fragrance review. Today I'm gonna to put my nose on a designer house, Narciso de Rodriguez, and the scent called For Him, Eau de Parfum Intense. Let's delve into it. It hit the shelves in 2012. Bottle sizes are 1.7, and this guy right here, the 3.3 ounce bottle, Concentrations Eau de Parfum. Flankers, it is a flanker to the original Eau de Toilette and pricing. Um, these ones don't come too cheap as far as trying to find a discount on it. You're looking at around 60 to $120 for this particular fragrance. Now, before I get more into the fragrance review, I want to thank my partner, FragranceX.com for this fragrance. You can utilize my sweet code, Robes08, and get this fragrance right here on Fragrance X. Yes, it is in stock. Um, I'd highly recommend, and this is from my nose, I highly recommend if you haven't smelled anything from the House of Narciso de Rodriguez, this is definitely not your typical designer brand. Just a fair warning to all of you out there, but the Eau de Toilette for, uh, for me is, is simply gorgeous and worth it anybody's collection. But there's a lot of people out there that hate that fragrance. It is very much a, a daring brand, dare I say, uh, in the designer game. So let's get into the note breakdown. There's not much to break down here. Let's get into it. In the introduction, we have pink pepper. In the mid, we have the floral of iris. And in the base, we have musk. The major notes to this nose right here would have to be musk. Um, most of these Narciso Rodriguez for him fragrances are built upon the note of musk and musk plays silly games with a lot of noses. So uh, very uh, challenging, can I say of a note, a very interesting note. And Iris is, is huge in this fragrance. And uh, I know that Violets was huge in the original. Um, so we'll see what we get out of the iris when this one group to see floral musky fragrance how many sprays and where i go one on the chest two on the neck so here and here then two on the arms pulse points i'll go uh inner elbows here with this long sleeve shirt and that is my sprays five sprays with the edp intense version time to dissect this sucker let's do a couple sprays on my hand here and remind me of this introduction now any huge fans of the Eau de Toilette, like this guy right here, if you think you're getting more power with the EDP here with the same scent, you'll be sorely disappointed. It does, however, take a page out of the book of the Eau de Toilette, but don't expect a more powerful version. Um, I'm, I'm a huge, huge advocate of the EDT. This one, I like it. 
but I'm going to get into it. I don't love it. So let's get into this introduction. Remind me of it. And from first sniff, polarizing from what I expect from Narciso de Rodriguez, a uh, fair warning with many men out there. Um, they may recoil uh, smelling this fragrance for the first time and think it's a feminine floral fragrance because it does have some floral qualities in this opening. Um, and you may not give this fragrance a proper shot on your skin just because of that introduction. And I can see a lot of people doing that. Um, what it is is the iris pulls a lot in this introduction. The iris in this scent is front and center and it's a full bloom of an iris note. Um, it gives a familiar criteria in this fragrance including some of the powdery aspect and that's where people uh, kind of start going this is getting more feminine with some florals but the, the powdery aspect of the iris is definitely there it has that white floral aspect that it would have um there's a good amount of musk backing it so there's there's not much more and there's not, nothing really masculine kind of back in this scent really um the musk it has a nice cleanliness to it it has a white aspect to this fragrance um, a little bit of pink pepper here, but not much. It also at times, um, when I was wearing this, um, and it's not listed in the notes, it has like a, almost a citrusy, lemony, almost aldehydic opening. Uh, it almost has like that sparkle that alde aldehydes have, um, and a fizzy like, uh, feel to the fragrance. It's very short lived. It's more about the florals than anything but I felt like that was an interesting take. When I wore this from time to time, it had it. Not every single time, mostly you're getting a lot of florals, a lot of the iris and the musk back in it with a little bit of that pink pepper, giving it a little bit of kick. Um, now, what does the iris do to this fragrance? Well, it gives it some floral aspects, but it also gives the scent a clean aspect. Iris does do that. It gives it a clean and upscale-like aspect, and it does in Narciso de Rodriguez for him, Eau de Parfum. Um, Heavy iris based fragrance, think Diorum, Diorum Intense. It, it has that class, that sophistication to the fragrance. The iris kind of gives that fragrance that, and it does in this fragrance too. The pink pepper itself is very soft and tame actually um, in this scent. Violets are not listed in this fragrance. However, um, I feel some violets in this scent, mildly, from the original. I, I, I know uh, Violet Leaf was in the original. Um, and it has a little bit of that. It seems like the heavy violets in the original kind of pulled back and switched spots with the iris. The iris is heavy in this fragrance. But overall, this introduction has a pillowy, um, almost airy-like feel to the fragrance. And it has a lot of that smoothness that iris gives to fragrances. Overall, that opening is challenging to wear as a, a male, but it has an artistic air to it as many Narciso de Rodriguez have. So um, a lot of men that do enjoy this fragrance, they're either, a lot of them, A, have been very deep in this fragrance journey and they uh, are, tend to appreciate what has been bottled here. Um, I, I could feel that or B, they're, they're heavy into niche fragrances and they will uh, appreciate what's in this bottle. Uh, a lot of people that love that mainstream air, a lot of mainstream uh, fragrances, will not like this. And same with the Eau de Toilette. It, it, it is a challenging scent too. Now more into the dry down of the Eau de Parfum. Um, not much movement here. It, it's backed mostly by clean musk and this is where the musk starts shining. Um, it continues to have an air of freshness to the fragrance. It has a cleanliness to it. It's very minimalistic uh, with a soft pillowy musks and florals uh, back in it. It has that same grayness that the Eau de Toilette has. Um, if I had to kind of, it, it's creamier because of the, the iris. This is much creamier than the, the Eau de Toilette. But if I had to, uh, and it's very much linear as a scent. Um, if I had to describe the grays, um, the Eau de Toilette is a dark gray and this is a light pale gray. Um, I just emphasize on the, the colors. So sometimes some fragrances just throw colors at me and this is what this does. It gives me a light gray while the Eau de Toilette gives me the dark gray. Overall, I prefer the Eau de Toilette to this for many reasons. Uh, there's much more going on in the Eau de Toilette. Um, it feels more challenging to me. It's much darker. I love darker scents. This feels like a challenging office scent. Um, if it makes sense to you. It's very well constructed and so is the Eau de Toilette. I really love the construction of it. Um, but it feels like this is a, a challenging, musky, 
office wear scent. Uh, Narciso Rodriguez as a whole, as a brand, very artistic with their releases. Uh, this is right under that umbrella and it won't be for everyone. I would expect most men will shy away from this one since it tippy toes into the floral musky unisex theme. It's brighter than the Eau de Toilette for sure. It's much cleaner. Um, this is like, comparing the two, the Eau de Toilette is uh, the clean shaven, or not the clean shaven, the Eau de Parfum is the clean, this is the clean shaven man with a fresh haircut. On the other side of the coin, the Eau de Toilette is the man with the beard, the big beard, but it's, you know, it's it's groomed well. Uh, longer hair pulled back, you know, still classy, both wearing suits. So um, it really does feel like these two have two different genres, as, as you can feel. Uh, recommended age on this one, it'd have to be unisex. I can see a woman rocking this and 20 plus as far as age range goes. Fragrances, that reminds me of this. There's not much. Um, heavy iris-based fragrances, yes. Heavy musky fragrances, yes. Um, Narciso de Rodriguez, this one. The closest that you can get to it is, of course, the uh, musky one uh, that I own. It's very much compared to it. And of course, the original Eau de Toilette. Best time to wear this fragrance would have to be um, daily and nighttime. Um, I really felt like this one was a almost a Swiss army knife in certain seasons, fall and spring, let's get into that. But at the same time, I could wear them at night and during the day. Uh, development, very much linear, work appropriate, yes. Um, it has an air of cleanliness to it. It's, it's a heavy iris musky based scent, very clean. Um, Clean and challenging in the same same uh, wavelength, which is is rather unique. A signature scent worthy, definitely for the right person. This is gonna knock it out of the park. I can see that. Uh, now let's get into my rating system. Projection seven bottles out of ten. It is above average. It's not beast per se, but it is above average. Longevity eight bottles out of ten. Um, it gives me seven to nine hours on any given wearing, which is really good. That goes to compliment factor four bottles out of ten. This is where it hurt. Um, I didn't expect that. Um, it, it really didn't garner much of anything. And that goes to uniqueness, nine bottles out of 10. Very unique in the men's game. Um, again, I'm, I'm failing to try to figure out anything that comes close to this. Uh, pricing versus what you get. Narciso de Rodriguez, the one thing that you're gonna get out of them is you can't deny the quality that you're getting from those fragrances, especially in the men's aisle. I'm get, giving it a, a, a very good, a very solid eight as far as pricing goes. Um, you won't be disappointed as far as the quality goes. Versatility, seven bottles out of 10. Um, this one right here can be very versatile. As you can tell uh, in the right seasons or in the right mood, um, it'll be easy to wear. That goes to smell. I'm gonna give this eight bottles out of 10. It really did what it was meant to do. I'm very simplistic, linear scent, but at the same time, um, so much of Narciso de Rodriguez written all over this. Very well done as far as the smell goes. And that goes to an overall score. Narciso de Rodriguez for him, or the Parfum, intense version. I am going to give it an eight bottles out of 10. Um, the higher scores, because even though I feel kind of lukewarm about the scent itself, it's not one of my favorite type of scents. I really do prefer the Eau de Toilette more in this. Um, I, I can appreciate the artistic side of it. And um, as far as the price goes and the quality and the longevity and the projection and the versatility and all that put into, into play, um, I really think it's a solid release from the brand. So I gotta give it the eight. And that goes to buy, try, or pass. This is way too daring, way too different, yet so clean and easy to wear. It has to be a try because not everybody's gonna like this. I, I, I could see it already. So uh, some people absolutely love this. They put it on a pedestal, like the best designer fragrance ever. Uh, to me, it's a, just a very solid and that's why it's got an eight. And as usual, thank you for watching my review on this fragrance. Please comment below if you love, hate, good or bad. I'd love to hear your comments on this particular fragrance. And as always, remember, greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching, YouTube.